In this series of short videos, we're going to explain to you all the different ways and options of ordering and putting together a Lexington style holster from KSG Armory. The first thing I want you to be aware of with respect to this is that where possible, we've taken steps to design the holster to fit all variations of lengths for that style of gun model. So for instance, this holster here has a Glock 17 in it. Obviously fits that one just nicely, but it will also fit a Glock 19. And that's typically not a major surprise for a lot of Glock users. They're typically uh, familiar with that and, and see a lot of holsters that work similarly. But surprisingly, what people may not know is that Glock 26s and Glock 27s like this one here have a slight variation in the frame thickness that don't necessarily mean they're always gonna fit the same holster that fit the Glock 17s and Glock 19s. And so as you'll see here though, we've designed this one to be able to accommodate both the Glock 27 size pistol as well as the similar but slightly longer barrel versions of your Glock 17s, Glock 19s, 22s, 23s, and so forth. So that's a little bit about how our holsters are designed to again, where possible, fit as many variations of similar model guns. So this is another good example. This is a P320 holster. This one's sized to fit a full size, but actually we have a carry or compact length slide and barrel in this one, and it obviously fits just fine. Our P320 holsters also will fit the newer X series grips as well as the original style of P320 grips. And you'll see similar characteristics across all variations of Lexington holsters. The next thing you'll wanna think about when ordering a Lexington holster is color. So we have a variety of color choices, uh, about a dozen or so options out there. Our standard color option is obviously black. So that is always available and is available at no additional charge. Many of the other color options will have a modest markup in price because those colors have a, a slight cost increase for us as well when sourcing them. One thing you should know is that there are four color options that are available in Bolteron. All of our black holsters are made from Bolteron, 80 thousandths thickness. Uh, we don't use anything thinner than 80 thousandths. Uh, that's true whether it's Bolteron or Kydex. But in Bolteron, we have four color options available. Black, Coyote Brown that you see here, OD Green, and also Gunmetal Gray. So those are the only colors that are available from us in Bolteron. All other color variations are either made from Kydex, again, 80 thousandths thickness, okay? So that's a purple, this is the EMT red. There's another red option that is uh, referred to as blood red. It's just a darker shade of red. We also have some other color variations, uh, many of which have this carbon fiber look to them. Just about any of these variations that you see are actually made from a material known as Holstex. Also 80 thousandths inch thickness, just like everything else here. Anytime you basically see a color choice that is carbon fiber, you can just about guarantee that's Holstex material, which is very similar to Kydex and Bolteron. Uh, it's just another type of material. They're all the same thickness material. They all function very similarly. Our preference is Bolteron, which is slightly stronger, a little bit more heat resistant, and also chemically resistant uh, as compared to some of these others. If you see solid shades of colors as a color option, chances are it's Kydex, unless it's one of those four first options I mentioned, which happen to be available in Bolteron. The next thing you want to consider when selecting your Lexington holster is hand orientation. Now one key feature that you should know about the Lexington holster is that all of the same features that you see on one side of the holster are also mirrored on the other side of the holster. What this means is that automatically the Lexington holster is ambidextrous. And this is really key because we're able to use the same molds to manufacture the holster for both right-handed shooters and left-handed shooters as well. Now, everything you see here on the table is set up for right-handed use currently, but you can obviously see how easy it would be to simply reverse the hardware and use it on the other side of the holster if you're a left-handed shooter. Now, when making the actual hand orientation selection in the ordering drop-down menu, you'll see that there's right-hand, left-hand, and ambidextrous 
options available. If you select right-handed use, you're gonna get a right-handed setup holster, meaning we'll install the hardware for you in a right-handed configuration. The reverse is true if you select left-hand. But if you select ambidextrous, you're gonna get the holster shell along with the associated hardware, essentially just packaged together in a bag or in the box that we ship it to you in. And you'll have the option of being able to set up the holster how you choose, simply because you selected ambidextrous. The next option to consider when selecting your Lexington holster is belt size or belt width. And we're talking about the, the width of the belt measured vertically as it sits on your person. Why this is important is it tells us what size of hardware to include with your holster. So the, the two common dimensions that we support uh, by default option on the website is either 1.5 inch or 1.75 inch belt sizes. The most common size that we see ordered through the website is 1.5 inch for 1.5 inch belt sizes. And most of the hardware you see on the table here is actually sized accordingly. I think these ones are actually a little bit bigger on the soft loops. I'll talk about those in a moment. But 1.5 inch seems to be one of the more common belt width sizes. So most of the hardware we see go out the door is, is sized accordingly. All of the single DCC clips that you see on our website are available also in 1.75 inch varieties. So it would look very similarly, but just a little bit extended here. If you'd like to accommodate belt sizes of a few other dimensions, the soft loops might be a good option for you. Uh, I, depending on belt, I sometimes can get these soft loops in their largest size here to fit a two inch belt, uh, but they'll also fit 1.75 inch, 1.5 inch, and you can even get these to fit 1.25 inch belts pretty easily. But I generally don't recommend belts uh, narrower than 1.5 inch for carrying a gun. The next thing to discuss is holster hardware, specifically belt attachments. I got a few here on the table we'll break down and discuss and help you understand what's available and also how and when to use the different varieties. The first thing you should know is that you always have the option of selecting no hardware in the case of a situation where you plan to already use your own provided hardware or belt attachments with your holster or perhaps because you plan on using one of our holsters with the Enigma from Filster. But let's first talk about the two most common options that typically are going to come standard with any holster at no additional charge. So Typically standard is gonna be either the pull the dot soft loops, like you see here on these ones, okay? Or it'll come standard with the monoblock and each holster model will say which comes with which or if you have the option for either or. So the DCC monoblock is a great option for a quick, easy to remove clip choice that's far better than the plastic clips that are pretty popular on, from a lot of other holster manufacturers out there we highly recommend the DCC monoblock as a great starting point for belt attachment hardware. But I've also been using soft loops for a lot of years and I'm a big fan because they work very well. They last a long time. They also give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of adjusting the holster uh, in terms of right height, cant, um, and you can also, of course, change the actual belt width just through these three holes that come right on the back of each of these soft loops. So that's great to have. If you're looking for probably the lowest cost, easy to adjust or easiest customizable option, go with the soft loops. But again, the monoblock is a, is a very popular choice, especially for a simple clip solution. And you know it's not gonna fail you. There is one option. In fact, the Knox holster from KSG actually comes standard with these RCS clips, two RCS clips. This is the 1.5 inch and this is the 1.75 inch that you see here. So this is the one exception to a lot of what I'm going to explain. Specific to the Lexington holster, it actually comes standard with a monoblock clip. There is a modest upcharge if you want soft loops. And then of course there's an additional upcharge if you wanna to go to something like two DCC clips like this. So let's talk about the DCC clips now. There's actually two varieties. These are the 1.5 inch size, and this is known as the Mod 4 Universal, and you'll see that it has these two distinctive slots. So these give you really excellent ride height adjustments. And then the other option is what's known as the DCC Mod 4 Shorty, and this is 
actually got a little bit of angle or cant adjustment available. So typically what we see with people using the DCC individual clips, such as like what you see on this holster here, is that the universal mod four clip is probably what you wanna go with because you can adjust it for right height a little bit more easily. If you're looking to use your Lexington holster in a traditional IWB, like three or four o'clock carry position, and you wanna be able to cant these clips, then the shorties are what you're gonna want here that have that cant option. Also, one other thing to consider with respect to your belt attachment, if you're looking for a tuckable solution, then these DCC clips are a really great choice because you can, you know, these come standard with the option to tuck. You can tuck your shirt in behind this and still carry the gun concealed. The other option is that you could actually order soft loops with a tuckable strut. And this would mount here and over here with the soft loop attached to the top of the strut. And that would give you a tuckable solution with soft loops. The next holster option selection to consider is belt claw style. Claws, or also known as wings, are a relative newcomer to the concealed carry holster game. Uh, for well, a decade-ish or so, these have become a, a standard configuration on the modern concealment holster. The reason why these work so well is that the belt passes through the clips or loops and the claw or wing applies some back pressure here to help tuck the grip of the gun into the body. Now the claw that we actually recommend because it's the most versatile and the most customizable for you, the end user, is actually the Mod Wing. It's a great product because it comes ambidextrous, meaning that the claw attachment piece can be reversed and used on either side. You actually see that done here in this light bearing version of the Mod Wing. So if you order a light bearing holster from us, it's, chances are it's gonna come with a light bearing mod wing attached to it. And this is the standard mod wing. And you'll see that they're one set up as a lefty and one set up as a righty. The other thing that's great about the mod wing is that there's two different sizes or two different lengths to the claw piece itself. And so what you have here is the short one on, on my left and the tall one on my right. And that's another great customizable feature to the mod wing because you can customize to some degree the amount of tuck that you're looking for from the grip of your firearm. Here we have a product from Dark Star Gear known as the Dark Wing, also a great wing. Uh, however, it's not quite as customizable as the mod wing and it's not ambidextrous. The Dark Wing is available in right hand and left hand configurations. So whether you order your holster in a left or right hand configuration, you're gonna get the appropriate dark wing along with your order. And one more thing again about holsters, if you're ordering them in an ambidextrous configuration, your one option really is the mod wing. Uh, you're gonna get that together with your bag of hardware together with the holster shell when you order an ambidextrous Lexington holster. We do actually have a third claw option. This is the RCS VG claw. We do only have it available for right hand configuration holsters, but it's another great option. This is probably the one that revolutionized the industry as far as claws go. One final note that I should speak on is this is important to note with respect to, especially the, the two DCC clip configuration together with a mod wing. It's usually recommended to use the shorter of the two mod wing attachments together with that DCC clip that's attached to the same screws. The reason why is because there will be a, a lot of torque applied between your belt and this clip and the tall version of the mod wing. And that, that tension is gonna fight itself and can lead to premature holster breakage. So generally we recommend starting at least with the shorter mod wing first and see if you can accomplish your objective of desired grip tuck with that shorter one first. If that doesn't work, go ahead and try the taller mod wing configuration together with the DCC clip. And if you have any problems with your holster, we'll still take care of you with its limited lifetime warranty. Now let's talk about sweat guard length. So we basically have two main options as far as sweat guards go. 
Our default option is what's known as a mid-height sweat guard option. The Lexington holster comes standard with a mid-height sweat guard. And that is the same on both sides of the holster, okay? So when you order the Lexington holster standard, you'll come with that, no additional charge. This works perfectly for most people. Now, you do also have the option of making the sweat guard a full length or full height. And that's what this one looks like. You can see these two here compared side by side. So you'll still get the mid height on the front side of the holster, but on the back side of the holster, if you select full height sweat guard, you'll get the full length covering all of the slide. Another selection option to consider when ordering your Lexington holster is actually what's known as AIWB length. Now this may be a little bit confusing to some, but let me try to explain. What we have here are two holsters that fit the same Glocks. I can actually take a full length Glock 34, which would actually poke through the bottom of the holster here. And this is actually currently cut for a Glock 17. So this is as short as possible as it can be made for a Glock 17. Over here, we actually have one that's known as extended for AIWB. So the AIWB length option basically tells us whether we are making the holster to be as short as possible, meaning it will, where possible, match the length of the barrel and slide of gun, or extend it for AIWB use. AIWB use meaning that typically for most people, a little extended length when worn in the appendix carry position is ideal. And one thing you should know is that there is, on some holster models, a limit to how short they can actually be trimmed, and I'll explain. This holster here is actually extended for AIWB use. It has in it a P365. It'll also fit a P365 XL. But the shortest this holster can be trimmed and still have the lower attachment points work and to have it still be aesthetically pleasing is just below this lower attachment point here. That's about the length of a P365 XL. So as a general rule, the shortest our P365 holsters will go is about P365 XL length. It's a similar thing in case of our holsters for like Glock 43s, 43Xs, and 48s. So this is a Glock 48 holster that's extended for AIWB use. A Glock 43 obviously fits in it very nicely. But again, the shortest that this one could be trimmed would be just about here. So if you tell us on these particular, these smaller guns that you want it as short as possible, you'll get it typically this short. Now you could always contact us for a custom order and say you want it even shorter, but you'll see we could trim it even shorter to be just the length of a Glock 43 or P365, but you'll see that even there's a limit to some extent because of where the hardware is attached at. So just something to know of when it comes time to select whether you want it as short as possible or extended for a little bit more effective, more comfortable AIWB use. Now let's talk wedges for your KSG Armory holster. We have a variety of options available from us that are manufactured in-house for your holster choice. Now wedges serve the purpose of being able to mount on, typically on the lower portion of the back side of the slide area of the holster. This is going to interface with your body in two ways. Number one, to help increase comfort, but also to help apply a little bit of pressure here to help bring the top portion of the gun in closer to the body. So really we're dealing with claws and wings to help tuck the grip and then applying a wedge can work together with that to help bring everything in a little bit closer to the body. So comfort and concealment are two great reasons to consider using a wedge. Our in-house options are what you see on the table here. I'll go ahead and start with these blocks on my right. These are actually how they start before they're cut in our factory here. These are the long blocks. That's a simple technical term there. These are about two and a quarter inches wide by about four and a quarter inches tall. These are great if you need a lot of holster tuck, uh, but they also are available in this configuration so you can do some of your own custom cutting to form it for your specific purposes with your body and your specific setup of gun and holster. These are gonna be more appropriate for the larger guns, so like this, full length Glock 17 holster here 
this would be a good size wedge potentially for you to consider. For your smaller guns, you're going to want to look more at our short block, so more like a P365 sized gun or Glock 48. These are sized approximately two and a quarter inches wide by three inches tall. Over here on my left, we have our long angled wedge and our short angled wedge. And so obviously they have an angle applied or cut to them. And these are our more popular option. They're kind of ready for use. These you might tr consider trimming yourself in, in your own custom configuration, but these are pretty much ready to slap on the gun. And this is a great place to start for most people. Usually most people are gonna have pretty good success by just using one of our short or long angled wedges. These all come already with the hook portion of hook and loop tape attached to the back side of them. And then it will come as well with the loop portion to be attached to your holster. Just make sure your holster is clean and dry and you can apply the loop tape here somewhere on the lower portion of the holster and then apply the wedge just like so. And the final thing you wanna look at when ordering your holster is whether it has a threaded barrel or not. Now, what this really means when you select threaded barrel option is it tells us that you want the bottom of the holster open. So if you select threaded barrel option, whether you are using a threaded barrel or not, you're gonna get the bottom of the holster cut open like this versus this one that's closed.